about virtual clinical trials. So what exactly, where exactly this all word started and how we are going ahead with this kind of a terms, I'll, I'll just put some light over it. So what happened in COVID uh, was everyone was sticking to homes and everywhere there was a lockdown and life got standstill like that. But everyone wanted the treatments, everyone wanted the vaccines, everyone wanted the diagnostics devices, everyone wanted the drugs to be coming into market, but these drugs or devices or vaccines will not come unless and until we conduct a clinical trial. So the problem here happened is earlier we used to speak theoretically that we can do decentralized clinical trial. Why every patient have to come to a hospital to conduct the clinical trial? Why every patient home cannot become a site and why we cannot give the feasibility to the patient to conduct the clinical trial at the patient home, at the locality or at the patient centricity at the patient home? Why can't we conduct the clinical trial? So before COVID, it was a theoretical version of what we were speaking that this could have been done, that we can do a drone-based dispensing, we can use a biometrics, we can use a variables, we can use a COAs, we can use a pros, we can use a telemedicine, we can use a e-consent. We were speaking so much theoretically before COVID. Suddenly what happened, COVID has hit and everyone got standstill and everyone went into homes without getting interacted to the hospitals because they were afraid about getting COVID if you travel to hospitals or if you go to sites. But still the research has to continue, the time has to reduce and the research has to evolve more of getting the vaccines or drugs and devices. Then that came into picture called as a decentralized clinical device. It's a simple logic that we are not into centralized location. We are into remote locations. We are into decentralized location. Every patient home has become the site for us and more adaptability for the patients and more patients are enrolling into clinical trial because we are giving an ability to the patient to participate at his versions and at his level to conduct into clinical trials. So now with that kind of things, I'm going forward uh, with what exactly is decentralized and how this came into picture and how we are going to have the future. So now coming back to DCT. So DCT in short terms, it's called as decentralized clinical trial, which is defined. So how are we going to define is uh, through the telemedicines or mobile apps or by using ePros or by using uh, e-consents or by using variables and technology to conduct the clinical trial over the traditional clinical trial. If you see traditional clinical trial, patient used to participate into clinical trial. They used to go and meet doctors, take the consent and participate in clinical trial. In front of doctors, they used to take a drug and the data is being collected and serious adverse events are being reported. The whole traditional system was being followed. Now, nothing is being as same as traditional. Patient does not need to come and meet to the investigator also to get enrolled. Patient directly calls to a toll-free number saying that, okay, boss, my age is this, my, my criteria is this, my inclusion criteria, my exclusion criteria is this, can you enroll? And system will enroll the subject and investigator directly puts a drone-based dispensing where a drone goes to the patient home and goes and takes the drugs with the patient where the compliance of a drug can be used by smart pills. The consent can be taken by using telemedicine. If a patient gets an adverse event called as rash, he can take a picture, upload it to the paid investigator and investigator can immediately go and give treatment. And patient can go to a local site rather than going to 100 kilometers away. So now this all changed our system thinking that how best can be used decentralized clinical trials and the adherence to the patients to the particular clinical trial. Without the patient is unhappy to travel, to spend money, to waste his time, all those things have got reduced. And the time to get the market has drastically reduced 50 to 60% because of one word that is your decentralized clinical trials. And coming back to remote uh, decentralized clinical trials as an operation strategy. So this is a strategy for the technology enhanced clinical trials. So we just added clinical trials along with the technology, but but in a bracket of regulations, we are strictly, strictly adhering to the regulations which are being given by CDSCO, NDCTs, FDAs, MHRAs, PMDAs, all the regulations we are bracketed into it, but we are using technology where patient centricity is more, involvement of the patient into clinical trial is more, the travel time and spending of money has reduced and the quality of data has been increased. 
So altogether, this is a beautiful situation where the future is all about the decentralized clinical trials, where we are more motivating the participants moving from the traditional research to the decentralized clinical trials. So now how are we going to understand about decentralized clinical trials? Why patients want the decentralized clinical trial rather than looking into it? So now simple logic for conducting this kind of a conference, there are two options. One is offline, one is online, which is virtual. Now there are advantage of online versus offline. So the biggest advantage for online is on time, every speaker is ready to speak. No delegates have to travel to attend this kind of a session. And the engagement of every delegate is same as offline. Now, if you just see that the, the, the conference is being held at the offline at the location, then you need to plan for a travel, hotel, get ready, go on set. And then you have to see that what session is being taken care of. So the time, the effort, the money, the quality, everything is being put onto risk to attend the sessions. Rather than doing an online, we are making use of time and I'm sitting at Bhopal and I'm still able to take the session. So that's the beauty of the virtual sessions or virtual clinical trials, which is your clinical trials, decentralized clinical trials. Now, there are three types of clinical trials. I have classified it. First is fully centralized, fully centralized. Now, all the clinical trials subject have to come to sites to take a drug to give a samples, to enter the data, to give the consent, to give the advertisement, whatever it is, patient have to travel to the site. So that's a word fully centralized, which is traditional, traditional. Now we are going slowly step by step to one more mode, which is called as hybrid. Now, for example, some of the assessments, some of the activities could have been done on telephone visits, could have been done virtually. And some of the visits, the patient have to travel and that is called as hybrid. So there are telephonic contacts, telephonic visits, telemedicine visits. There are some visits where patients have to come because there might be some assessments which are very carefully considered by the investigator. Those kind of assessment has to be conducted at the site. Now the combination of a site-centric and virtual is considered as hybrid. So, and last one is you are fully decentralized. Now, patient does not need to meet investigator. It's all the meetings are being done virtually, starting from enrollment of subject, taking the consent, taking the study drug and entering the data into the trials, giving the lab samples to the local sites and reporting the adverse events using the EPROS patient report outcomes, e-diaries, and also all the data electronically is transferred by using variables. Now, this is what you call it as uh, fully centralized. Now, I think people are using hybrid modes and also sometimes fully decentralized. But fully centralized, we are moving ahead now. The future is very simple that all the clinical trials move from the centralized to hybrid or fully centralized or fully decentralized. Now, fully centralized, so it's a simple thing. It's a complex trial procedures. And the screening procedures will be very complex. Cell therapies and imaging are all conducted through the hospitals or academic research center. So this is your fully central. And hybrid is there are less complex trials. And there are some visits which are required, such as injections or x-rays or ECGs, but not necessarily to the hospital also. To the beside the patient home, exactly the local lab also we can consider. So why are we asking the patient to travel 150 kilometers to conduct into clinical trials? Why can't a patient just immediately go to the next lab and take the sample? Why can't a patient get a reminder to the phone saying that your cab is booked? And Uber cab comes into the home of the patient and the patient takes the cab, goes to lab and Uber cabs get dropped off. And all the data is from the local lab is being pushed to the investigator. Why can't we do it? Answer is we can do it. That's how the decentralized clinical trial came into picture. And the future is very simple that everything will be decentralized by using the technology along with the clinical knowledge, along with the regulation knowledge. Now, last one, fully centralized, all the trial procedures are conducted virtually. So not needed. 
that patient has to come. So now if you go and see that in, in I think 10 years back, if someone used to say that, if you want to do a shopping, you have to go to a shopping mall for going shopping mall, you have to get ready, go on car, get into traffic and then go and enjoy the shopping. But now people does not want to enjoy that shopping anymore. Everything is online and you go and have a phone on it and uh, tap it, okay, this X, Y, Z is needed, put it in bucket and then go on payment. So you don't need to go and purchase and go and do a shopping at the offline sites rather than doing on the phone. So which is fully centralized or decentralized trials. Now this picture shows so clear that what is decentralized clinical trial and illustrations how the clinical trial is being conducted. Now let's let's take it up point by point how it is being done. So the first one is your drug manufacturer. So the drug manufacturer manufactures the drug. So he gives the drug which has to be taken into the uh, patients and it goes and transported to the hospitals, study centers. The study centers, it goes and it is being maintained at the study centers. From the study centers, all the drugs are being drone-based dispensed to the patient. Drone-based dispensed to the patient or the drugs are being directly sent to the patients. So patient does not need to wait for the drug. Very clear. Patient will get all the drugs from the hospital. Now, patient will have access to internet connections. Patient will have access to the internet connections. And patient will be given a tablet or mobile app to enter the data. Like say, for example, patient is being asked questions. Have you taken a drug? Yes or no? If you say yes, the next question, what time the drug was being taken? How much water you have consumed? Have you got any advertisements? What are your vital signs? What is your blood pressure? Or what is your pulse rate? What is your X, Y, Z values? So all the values, patient is directly entering into the mobile with the help of one powerful tool, which is internet connection. And now patient also will have variable monitors. Like say, for example, I'm wearing a watch. So now this watch, can monitor my blood pressure, ECG, X-ray, X, Y, Z, everything. And this variable is directly connected to my central secured system. So now patient is having direct access to the internet and app base to enter the data by the patient only. Patient will also have the variable which is just a watch or just a variable which can collect the data from the patient about the information of vital signs or ECGs or X-ray, X, Y, Z. And patient, all this information, including this data, which has been entered by the patient and also the variable data, all the data is being sent to your secured central database. So it's directly connected, all data, which has been entered by the system, which patient is entering and variable information is directly sent to the secure database. Now patient, patient, if patient wants to speak to the doctor or investigator, not necessary, patient will not come to the study center. Patient will go immediately near hospital doctor, which is local MD, and he can directly take a local lab values, wherein he can give this data to directly to the central database. So patient is not going and uh, working into the study coordination. It's directly going into a place. Can you give one minute, please? Okay, so now patient directly goes and provides this information directly to the central database from the local lab. And doctor also will provide the information to directly the secure database. Now, if the patient is providing the information of data, patient is providing the information of variable monitors, patient is directly going to the local MD and doctor is providing the information to the secure database. Patient is directly going to local lab and local lab data is also being given into the secure database. Now, there is no information which is required by the study coordination centers because patient himself has added so much value into the clinical trial by taking the drugs, by giving the data, by providing the variables, by providing the local MD data, by providing the local lab data. Now, this makes us so much easy to conduct the clinical trial. And this is how the flow of decentralized clinical trial happens in real time. So that's this is so beautiful illustrations that how a decentralized clinical trial marks us. 
reduced timeline, improved efficacy, and reduced pricing. Now, types of decentralized clinical trial already have spoken hybrid, a combination of uh, site based and virtual trial is hybrid, fully remote, which is fully decentralized, where patient does not need for any kind of assessments to be performed at the hospitals. And what are the different tools we use for conducting the decentralized clinical trial? So starting from enrollment, let's take it as enrollment. If a patient wants to get enrolled, he calls to a toll-free number. And this process is called as IVRS. So this technology is called as IVRS technology, where the patient directly calls to a toll-free number and that pushes into the trial subjects. So this is first one. The second one, once the subject is enrolled, he has to sign the consent form. The e-consent is the second one. The e-consent is the second one, which the patient directly switch on the camera and the investigator switch on the camera. Investigator start explaining about the consent form. This is the study and this is the objective. This is the design. This is the number of subjects. These are statistics and this is inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, risks, benefits. And this is the compensation. This is the payment. This is the investigator. This is the contact details. An investigator directly signs a soft copy. Subject directly signs a soft copy. He consent. Now, once the subject has passed or once the subject has given the consent, then you go for a telemedicine. So wherein subject takes the medication after talking to the doctor for everything, he just take a Zoom call or a WhatsApp call or whatever it is, which is documented evidence where telemedicine can be used. And the home visits, the home visits by the CRCs and centralized data collection systems and mobile devices and variables like CVOAs, the clinical outcome assessments, and pros, so which is patient report outcome. So these are very, very powerful tools like variables like a watch, which can give accurate efficacy that patient is having this X, Y, Z data. This is the value changes we've been having. Patient interactive portals. Now say, for example, patient got SAE. Now patient does not know really this SAE is related or not related. Now patient can just go to a chatbot, like for example, chat GPT, chat board. So patient will type saying that, hello, I got an SAE. So then the system will ask, what is what type of SAE? So then we will type saying that SAE is heart attack. So then system will tell, okay, when you took drug, what drug you took, what are the other medications you took? So it's a chat board. It's a patient interactive portal, how you can do it. And the next one, IPM steady supply logistics, which is so good that we are using QR codes or blockchain technologies. Now, day in and day out, we use phone pays. Day in and day out, we use QR codes to participate into any of the works. Now, how are we going to use these QR codes from the manufacturing to the patient? Now, whether the manufacturer has sent the right medications, whether it has been stored in right temperature and monitoring conditions or moisture conditions, whether the patient has received the sealed medications or not. How do we know? So just a QR code, scan it, and then you will come to know that which was the system which was being used and how it was being collected and how it was being delivered, which is called as supply chain management. So IVRS, RTSMs, and then telemedicines, e consents e-pros, and then mobile devices, patient interactive, interactive portals, chat GPTs, so many things, so many things are there to conduct the decentralized clinical trial. So now open your minds saying that technology has made so many easy things that just that we need to learn as much as technology to reduce the time and to improve the quality and the improve the efficiency and the best molecule has to hit the market how best molecule can hit the market with reduced time length. So COVID has taught us so many stories. One of the biggest stories is we can't have more days for bringing a molecule, but we can't take shortcuts. So now the decentralized clinical trials is so good that how we can do the clinical trials. Now, what are the benefits? What are the benefits? First benefit for patient. So patient engagement the withdrawal of patient will be very, 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 very less because you are making the patient not to go outside of a home. He can sit at the home. All the medications are coming. All the variables are coming. All the inclusion of the patient centricity, understanding the patient will feel that it's my tribe. And even participating at every question is being asked to me only. So system is asking, saying that, have you taken the drug? 
alarms are coming. CAPS is automatically booked. You are being taken into the local sites. So patient centricity is so much higher that the patient access is more and less burden on the patient that you need to travel. Say, for example, if you want to travel for 100 kilometers, it's very challenging for me because it is a burden for me to get ready to wear blazer, to, to take my car or to take flight. And, but this all will reduce if you are conducting a clinical trial in a decentralized way. So fits patient daily lives. So you don't need to change your uh, schedule. Saying that, okay, today we have to go to site and we have to spend time. A doctor, we have to wait to see him and all those things. And increased patient education. Retention of the patient. Engagement of patient. The biggest challenge in clinical trial, which we are never speaking about it, is the education of patient and retention. Patient feels that it's my trial. I have to participate. So that's where you do a decentralized clinical trial. And improved safety and efficacy because all things are connected with technology. Any patient says that I got an adverse event, immediately investigator can send one more pay, one more doctor to the patients. Increased speed of trial, increased data accuracy, standardization, and boost the communication between all parties, including the patient, sponsor, investigator, IRB, regulatory bodies. Regulatory bodies also insisting us to conduct the clinical trial with respect to DCT, but the regulations have to be followed without deviating the regulations and the rights and safety and well-being and the confidentiality and the patient-related information and the efficacies and safety of the patients are being not compromised because regulations are very clearly saying that ethics or confidentiality or the safety and the efficacy and the quality of the data or rights and safety and well-being of trial subjects should not be compromised. But how can we use our technologies, making sure that all these terms are being met and we are reducing the time for the drug to the market and how we are, can get these drugs into market is being done accordingly. I think that, that was my last slide, uh, which was interesting story about the decentralized trials. And I hope I was on top of time because I was having my clock ticking. So, but I'm open for one or two questions. Uh, if we have time, I think uh, Rashmi can, uh, uh, Rashmi, I hope I have, I have uh, taken uh, exact time and I hope a couple of photos are being taken for this session, Rashmi. Uh, if yes, if there are photos being taken, the recording is going on and uh, we're bang on time. So, uh, thank you because I was worried about the time uh, because I thought I'll give two minutes of time for any questions and my slides I'll share it in short time of uh, short time so that you can share with the you know, people uh, for this. Yes. Um, yes, so uh, we do have actually participants. We have participants from Pakistan as well who specifically requested your presentation. So just letting you know. Uh, I'll give the audience a, a few seconds to ask any questions if they yeah, have. Yeah, because one question, at least I can take it up, uh, Rashmi, if you allow me to take one question, I think. Yes, sure, sure, sure. I'm just uh, waiting to see if they have any questions. So I hope the session was good and I hope I'll get a feedback also on this session, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure we have our esteemed uh, panelists also uh, right now with us. And uh, I think it's it was it was wonderful. Uh, okay, so uh, one uh, question, uh, mostly I'm getting requests for your presentation actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give the presentation. I'll give the presentation. Uh, and uh, I know that other speakers are waiting and David is waiting. So I thought I'll complete my session quickly. No worries. No worries. Uh, so Mujib, uh, Mujib, what do you uh, see as the future? Uh, is decentralized clinical trials the future? Is remote uh, data capture the future? Because we are talking about wearable devices. In fact, uh, even my uh, founder, AKT's founder, Aditya, was talking about us trying to incorporate wearables, uh, making an Internet of Things uh, kind of an arrangement. So do you think that's the future? Yeah, that's definitely the future, uh, Rashmi. It might take time. Uh, we might be a little bit adamant uh, to understand the technology, but people have got changed. Uh, uh, if you see directly 15 years back, how many of us thought we'll use phones? 
right. uh, mobiles, uh, technology. But now I think youngsters are using so good at the technology and they know more about it. They are using chat GPTs, they are using multiple technologies. The only challenge which we have, uh, Rashmi, is technology with regulations. Uh, is something which we need to see and future is about decentralized. No doubt about it. Technology, 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 decentralized, decentralized, decentralized. That's it. And that is going to make clinical trials more easier and yes. reach the patients more easier. I think we get a better patient pool. We get more patient pool. And we like we also had a session on patient engagement. I think it will also improve patient engagement. Yeah. So I think that point already been added that how much you make patient happy, you will continue into your trial. So the engagement and the withdrawal of the patient will reduce. So that's the most important difficult point which we are not at all discussing about anyone. So yeah. that um, how patient you can engage and how can you reduce the withdrawal of the uh, patient from the trials. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mujibji. And if anybody has any questions, please put it through. I will uh, pass it on uh, to Mr. Mujib. And uh, he has very graciously agreed to share the PPT. So it will about virtual clinical trials. So what exactly, where exactly this all word started and how we are going ahead with this kind of a terms. I'll, I'll just put some light over it. So what happened in COVID uh, was everyone was sticking to homes and everywhere there was a lockdown and life got standstill like that.